Hi, my name is Michel Cugy and I'm a functional safety expert. And today I'm going to talk about one of the very basic principles in functional safety. It is the categorization into the quantitative and the qualitative part. So this video is aimed at people who are looking for an introduction into functional safety. So in order to draw this, I call it big picture, representing kind of an one pager overview showing this basic principle, I'm going on the whiteboard. Here on the left side, I'm going to start with one of the first steps. It is the risk analysis. The risk analysis mainly is about finding out what can happen to a person standing at the machine, sitting in the car, or in any way being a user of a product of a system. So here it is about finding out about possible harm if the machine or the control unit in the car fails, about the extent of the possible harm. It is about finding out possibility of avoidance in case there is a failure in the system. And it is about uh, estimating um, the frequency of exposure of someone standing at the machine or being in the car, being exposed in a specific situation. And uh, we are regarding two different standards here. It is the IC65508 Type A standard and it is um, the automotive relevant ISO 26262. And what's coming out of the risk analysis is uh, in the first case the cell level from 1 to 4. And uh, in the automotive it is called automotive cell level, so A cell. It is A to D. And what do we have to regard next? So in functional safety, it is all about failures and ideas about how to avoid failures in my product or how to control them, how to mitigate them. So in functional safety, it's all about failures in the product means due to a bug in the development or due to a random hardware failure, the product fails and may lead to a dangerous situation and finally maybe to a hazardous event. And now it is about thinking what measures can be done in order to avoid these failures. And so there will be a first categorization into hardware failures. And software failures. Let's stick in the first step on the hardware failures. There will be another categorization and so-called random hardware failures. And into systematic failures. What is the difference here? 
So random hardware failures are about a part has suddenly a defect due to aging. For example, a transistor burns. While systematic failures are due to bugs or mistakes being done during the development. So this is uh, quite a different way of regarding failures. And what about random hardware failures? What do we have to do here? We have to get them under control. So if a transistor burns, let's say being part of a driver stage, driving a relay, then one measure in order to get this failure under control may be to have another channel, so another, another driving stage. So the main measures in order to get random hardware failures under control are uh, redundancy, and diagnostic functions. A diagnostic function, for example, regarding a power supply, let's have a power supply where we have a voltage regulator. And in that case, we have this voltage regulator called a so-called intended function. So this is the function I'm intending to do, regulating the voltage. And on this voltage regulator, I have a diagnostic function that is capable to detect over voltage or under voltage, for example. And um, this is called diagnostic function in the IEC. 61508 and it's called safety mechanism in the automotive relevant standard. So safety mechanism. Now what about the systematic failures? It is all about introducing measures in order to avoid them. And this is mainly by introducing a proper so-called safety life cycle. A safety life cycle here means you're going to have a kind of a process landscape that will describe the way you're going to develop your product from the beginning with requirements, writing requirements, having requirements management system, um, describing a development model like the V-model, um, going down the left angle of the V-model, for example, um, for more and more refining during your development, and then going up the right angle of the V-model for verification and validation. And so, measures in order to avoid systematic failures are mainly related to having proper development processes. And um, this is relevant for both standards. We have a look right now here onto it. And especially in the IC61508, there's also one section about getting systematic failures under control. And here we have some generic topics like um, EMC, electromagnetic compliance, um, over temperature, having a watchdog if there's a microcontroller, watchdog for microcontroller, and some more topics here. And this is to understand as, in other words, for example, if we had a microcontroller within our architecture, 
and let's say we don't have a watchdog. This will be regarded as a systematic failure because a watchdog is regarded as um, being capable to get systematic failures under control. <coughs> so now coming back to the result of our risk analysis, we have a cell level 1 to 4 or we have an acyl level A to D. What does it mean? It means that we have a rigor defined by safety level, so by the sill level or the acyl level. And this rigor defines the requirement, the requirements we are going to have when it is about controlling random hardware failures, as an example. And so that means here. On the left side, we have the so-called quantitative part. Quantitative means here we have to calculate specific values in the IAC, in the IAC this is the PFH or PFD. And we have the safe failure fraction that is related to the diagnostic functions. And in the ISO, we have respectively the PM. HF and we have the SPFM single point fault metric and we have the latent fault metric. If you're interested in that uh, you might have a look into my video about FMEDA. So this is result of the FMEDA. And so coming back to the rigor, the rigor is going to define, will define the target values of all these uh, numbers you have to calculate. And so uh, you can say that uh, driven by the safety level, cell level or ISIL level, um, you have a more or less rigor for this quantitative values. And what about uh, the right side? So this is um, the other part of the game here and this is the so-called qualitative part or the so-called systematic safety integrity qualitative part. And also here the cell level or ISIL level will define the rigor, the strengthness of all the measures, techniques, and methods you have to apply when performing a development. And due to that, you will find many, many tables in these standards with a listing of all these methods, methods and techniques. And all these techniques are adjusted against the level, cell level or the ACL level. And now what's left over here is the software. And the software only fails systematically. That means there is no kind of aging of software. And as a consequence, you can say 
when it is about software development, software development according to functional safety, it is only about having a very proper development process, like you will find, like you can find in good books of software engineering. If you follow such a good book uh, in software engineering, you will find that you will intrinsically fulfill most of the requirements coming out of the standards here. So that's all for now. Looking forward to your questions and to your comments. Thank you for listening and don't forget to register my channel. Have a like, a comment and activate the bell. Inquires under my email address below. Thank you.